Georgia and I came to the Everything Girls Love event basically to learn the success and stories of successful business women so I can also be a successful business woman. Everything Girls Love is a movement where women claim their blessings, take control of their destinies, and create their own tomorrow. They say behind every great man is a great woman. I really think that the saying is behind every great woman is a greater sister who's always comes with a straight, no chaser advice, warm hugs, and a ready to take on all challenges stance when things get a little sticky. However, nothing can replace the relationship of sisterhood and how it too can feed your soul. So ladies, sit back, kick your feet up, relax, and welcome to our women's talk and have a great time. Let me, I'll just tell you guys a little bit about where I started and um, kind of where I am today, what you don't know from TV a little bit. Um, I started in this industry about um, a little over 10 years. I went to Howard University. From Howard, I graduated, and um, I thought I was going to law school. In the interim, I decided to intern at Violator Management, which was one of the top management companies. Um, we had 50, we had Buster, we had Missy, we had Tweet. You name it, for 2002, they were the hottest artists out there. I wound up leaving Violator after about four to five years and started my own management company and I started managing the diplomats. I was working with Jim Jones. And that was a 36 hour a day job. I don't know if it's 36 hours in your days, but there was 36 hours in my day. I had the money. You know, I had the fame, but I had no family, and I was losing my friendships because I was never around to be a friend. And um, after many conversations and, and, you know, many just kind of me time and that resting time that you spoke about, I realized that I needed a balance, and I, and I needed to, to get my family life and my home life together so I could feel like I have a purpose. Because I was working so hard and I was going, 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 but it was like, I would come home and say, why did I do all of this? What is my purpose? And um, I, I decided to focus on me, and I decided to focus on my family and focus on friendship. And um, I got reunited with Ayana after, you know, we never lost touch or never stopped being best friends, but I just wasn't really a friend to her. And you know, becoming more of a friend and letting work take a back burner a bit, I was able to learn so much and open up so much to who I am and um, what I wanted to be and who I wanted to become. So, how can you surround yourself with this strong base? You know, how did you guys, how did y'all find each other? How did you get that friendship? The first thing I'm saying to you is you're here, right? Mm -hmm. You are here and women just like you are here in this room and that's the very reason that we do these events so that women like you and women like all of us can connect with each other. So I would start today while you're here, exchange numbers, meet some people. That's why we have all this time built in. So step one is being here, right? And step two is leverage the women that are here today around you because that's exactly what we want to be able to offer by having events and times like this together. So great question, but look, I mean, there are so many women here for you to even start to build that connection with. And you never know who's in the room. So meet everyone. <laughs> Do that. My question is, I guess, when or what was that breaking point where you said, I want to work, walk in my purpose? Like, I want to start my business. I want to do what I'm supposed to be doing on this earth. So what was that breaking point and what was that situation that made you decide that you wanted to do that? kind of knowing your, your self-worth. You know, I feel like a lot of times, you know, women, you know, especially black women, you know, struggle in that in that department. Knowing what you have to offer. You know, sometimes you wake up at a point like, you know, I have so much to give. You know, you have so many thoughts, so many ideas, so many things that you want to do. Like, I have so much to offer. You know what I mean? But it's just the point of just implementing it and just taking, you know, taking that step and just, just doing it. You know, a lot of times, even for people who want to go to school, sometimes they say, oh, what do you want to go to school? What do you want to do? But the hardest step is actually going there and speaking with a counselor. That's like the hardest part of it. And then everything else will just like fall in place. But just to know your self-worth, know what you have to offer, and just, you know, and just to go for it. I have a, a, a nice day job, but I also have a business on the side, and people always keep telling me that are my mentors, don't you dare leave until this is bigger than that. But I feel like if I don't leave, I can't make this bigger than that. So I just am curious what your thoughts are on that. 
<laughs> That's such a hard question. It really is. For me, I left my day job and it wasn't better at the time. But that worked for me. Again, I lived at home with my mom. I didn't have any children. I didn't have a husband. Um, I think everyone's situation is different. You know, could I say to you, yes, leave and, you know, you'd be able to work full time? Yeah, I could. But I don't know your situation to tell you. I don't know if you have bills to pay. I don't know what your situation may be. And, um, you know, that's something, I don't, I don't know how to answer that. Yeah, I think I agree. And that, that would have been my response too. Like for me now, I have those same thoughts, right? Like I have businesses that I'm running on the side and I'd love to devote 100% of my energy there, but I got a mortgage to pay. And I have a son who's in daycare and I have to pay his tuition, right? And it ain't cheap, you know? So for me, those are the things that I have to take into account. And me personally, I'm very risk averse. I don't like a ton of risk in my life. So I would, if I were your mentor, I'd have said the same thing. Do not leave your day job until you, you know, you can support yourself off of this. But to be honest, I don't know that that's the right answer for you. Yeah. If I were younger, no kids, no mortgage, no husband, I probably would jump right in and I'd yeah. go full force, full speed ahead and I'd like get it done. Yeah. So that by the time I'm ready to take on more and bigger commitments in my life, I'd be at a place that I can handle those commitments. But again, to Andy's point, it's your situation where you are right now and what makes the most sense for you. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a hard question to kind of tell you exactly black and white, this is what you should do or shouldn't.